Okay guys, we're here in the Austin Eye preoperative area and look who I found. This is a light adjustable lens. And if you've been watching my other videos, you'll notice it looks completely different than the Odyssey and the Clearview 3. First of all, the haptic design. This is sort of a classic three-piece design with a different material for the haptics compared to the optic. Second, the optic itself, it is kind of simplistic in a lot of ways. It's actually made of silicone instead of acrylic material. And you'll notice it has none of the rings or segmented bifocal features that we saw in the other lenses. And the biggest difference of all is that the light adjustable lens is adjustable with light, which means that after the lens is implanted, I can use a special light delivery device to change the prescription on this lens. No other lens can do that. Now the light adjustable lens cannot give a full range of vision from a single implant. It just can't. It doesn't have the rings, doesn't have the segmented bifocal. So what you can do to help patients get a range of vision is do a monovision setup. So one eye set for distance and the other one more for near. This is really good in folks who've already had that before. Maybe they wore contacts when they were younger or had monovision LASIK. I love that for these patients. Now, even with the monovision setup, they may still need glasses for certain tasks, but if they're kind of used to it, they'll love it. Another thing to consider with the light adjustable lens is that it's made of silicone. So if there's any chance the patient may need silicone oil implanted into their eye due to retinal issues, maybe don't use the light adjustable lens because that can cause issues with the optic. A big consideration for me when I put the light adjustable lens in is what are the goals of the patient? If they have extremely high visual needs, say an airline pilot, I'm gonna recommend or lean towards this lens because it gives a very high quality of vision with very minimal compromise. And we can feel pretty confident after we've placed it that we can adjust the prescription to give them exactly what they want. Now, caveat real quick, you don't have unlimited amount of adjustment here with a light adjustable lens. You only get about four diopters worth of change that you can do post-operatively. So be judicious when you're picking where the lens is gonna fall and then keep in mind the amount of stigmatism that they have because if the astigmatism is too high, you're probably gonna have to debulk that a little bit with like an LRI or something at the time of surgery or even a little bit of LASIK post-operatively if you can't control it enough with the lens or with your LRI intraoperatively. So let's talk a little bit about the logistics with the light adjustable lens. It's a very time intensive lens technology. It's also, I think, the most expensive lens technology overall. After surgery, you'll need to heal for at least a month, sometimes longer before you can have your first light treatment. Then, if you need one, if, you, if you're right where you need to be, they can just lock it in. But let's pretend uh, that you need adjustments. So you can have one, two, three adjustments, sometimes four, although usually recommended three at the most with a four diopter limit. And then you need to lock the lens in, which can take anywhere from two to three sessions of light to fully seal this thing in and lock it down so that the prescription that you've been titrating to stays in place, is not adjusted by any external factors. Early when this lens first came out, it didn't have what's called active shield. So its prescription could be changed just from normal sunlight. They've kind of fixed that now so that you don't have to worry about ambient light so much. But I still tell patients to wear special glasses given by the company, which is called RX Sight, when they're outdoors in bright sunlight. Once your lens is locked in, you don't need to worry about that anymore. And you can just be outdoors and, and live your life. So it's just a temporary thing, but you need to really make sure that you set enough time uh, aside after you've had a light adjustable lens so that you can get the work done with your surgeon to execute on your goals and your mission. So if you have limited available time, the light adjustable lens probably isn't the lens for you and you may want to consider different options. All in all though, I'm really happy that we have the light adjustable in our arsenal and for the right patient, it's a really good lens and definitely one of the best lenses of 2024. I'm looking forward to future innovations from this company. I understand putting out a new loader and injector. So hopefully that helps with predictability and draw operatively. And who knows, maybe someday there will be a multifocal light adjustable lens. That is nearly the holy grail from my perspective. But I hope you enjoyed this video. Have a great day. Bye-bye.